Hi students, this is Unit 1, Lesson 6, Research Methods, Case Studies, Naturalistic Observations, and some Surveys. In this lesson, we want to look at research methods that psychologists will use. We want to compare and contrast those methods, the disadvantages and the advantage of them, and describe the importance of representative samples and the need for replication in surveys. Case studies are individual basis. A case study is a type of research where, let's say, one person has gone through a trauma, such as this skull, there was some brain damage, and so we're going to look at that individual, or somebody who has been locked away, such as a person named Jeannie, which we're going to talk more about her. These individual, we study them in great depth by using observations, tests, interviews, and analysis of written records in order to gain information from that individual case study. This is good because we, in the case of the skull over here, this guy had brain damage, but he lived through it. So we were able to learn more about the brain, but we don't want people to have brain damage. And that's the disadvantage is that it's not the, a representative of the general population because most of us don't go through life with brain damage such as this. Uh, we can't replicate the study. We don't want to replicate the study. And sometimes doctors will push the ethical boundaries and do some things that are shady in order to get to these case studies. So that does not advance the scientific agenda much. Our next research method is naturalistic observation, and it really is what it sounds like. We go into nature and we observe the animal in their natural habitat. In this case, this is a woman uh, named Jane Goodall. She's pictured next to the guy with the camera, and she went out into the wilderness and watched chimpanzees in the, ch in the 1970s. And she watched, she recorded the behavior of the organism in their natural environment. Now, I do this on a regular basis with you guys. You are human animals, and I observe your behavior, behavior in your natural habitat, the classroom. Um, I assemble the research and make, draw conclusions and, and develop theories based on that research. Here are some things that we've observed about human beings that we laugh 30 times more in social situations than we would if we were alone, that our eye muscles are also connected to our smile, and that we met a series of, of vowels and stuff. Um, furthermore, there's a little video here we'll watch, um, but the advantages of naturalistic observation include large amounts of rich data because we're just watching stuff happen, uh, but people might behave a little bit differently if they know that they're being observed. Now here, research methods, we have laboratory observations. This wasn't listed in, in your list of objectives, but we can watch animals in a lab to study behavior in a controlled situation. And there are ethical guidelines for, for ethical treatment of animals in lab situations. We can offer tests such as personality tests, psychological tests, intelligence, aptitude, um, how does uh, how do people score on these tests? And then there's surveys. Now surveys have a large uh, number of advantages and disadvantages. Surveys study a large portion of people's attitude and behaviors, and there's different sorts of surveys. You can interview people face to face. You can interview people by survey and questionnaire, um, which is good because you can get a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, and it doesn't cost you anything. People, it's, you can interview people for cheap. But sometimes the phrasing and the wording of questions can be off and it can be leading. Uh, survey questions may lead be leading and phrased unclearly. Uh, political uh, surveys are oftentimes loaded and leading and that's a problem. So we can't draw ac adequate and accurate conclusions based on survey data. I'll tell you about one uh, from Franklin Roosevelt in class in 1932. Uh, there was a survey data that the um, Reader's Digest sent out and it was very flawed. So uh, tell you that story tomorrow uh, in class. Uh, people are reluctant to admit bad things when they are taking surveys. So maybe they uh, aren't going to tell the truth when it comes to surveys. It is tricky to think about sampling when we are serving, po surveying populations because uh, we, if, let's say we wanted to get all the students in Indian Land High School and get an accurate representation of opinions of everyone in Indian Land High School. Well, I can't give that survey just to people in my class because I don't have an adequate representation of the entire population. 
if the entire population is all of the students of Indian Land High School, what I want to do is a random sample where everybody has a chance to get into that survey rather than a stratified sample. Um, I have a stratified sample because I mostly have sophomores and juniors in my classes. So I wouldn't get the entire population if I just sampled my um, people. So there's a brief overview of, of some different types of scientific research. So you got your case study, you've got your naturalistic observation, you got lab observations, and then you have your survey data, which you have to take into account who you are sampling and how they're chosen and how they're participating in your survey.